So are we ready? Do Woo! we want to hit it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Well, let's just cue the theme music. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the footies for 2015. We're your hosts, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore. I'm Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? And we are bringing you the best performances of the year. As voted by you, the people. Can we just listen to the music now? Yeah, now now it's just a time to listen to the music. (laughs) I'm going to keep that going in the background a little bit. All right, we have 15 categories. We put it online. We said, go, vote, tell us who the very best players were this season. And uh, we've got the results. That's all there is to it. The results are in. Now, do we have, uh, we don't have, okay, okay. We're going to go through the nominations as well. The brass is coming in. (laughs) Oh. Isn't this just perfect? (laughs) Oh, Oh, man. It's over. Oh, I started it again. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so. First category that I want to bring to your attention. You guys can read the nominees. Who were the nominees for performance of the year? This is the single week performance that was the very most impressive one of the season. And again, we told everybody out there to consider all things impact to your fantasy team when they happened, that type of thing. All of those things. For performance of the year, the nominees were Antonio Brown in week 15 who put up a stat line of 16, 189 yards and two touchdowns against Denver. Ooh. That's pretty good. David Johnson in week 15 with 29 carries for 187 and three touchdowns. You had Drew Brees' monster, gargantuan best quarterback week of the year in week eight with seven touchdowns. And 500 yards. <laughs> Five, oh, yeah. I missed, I, I forgot about How the dare you? Those are Kellen Moore numbers. <laughs> 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 Thomas Rawls was a big performer in week 11 with 30 carries, 209 yards, as well as a touchdown through the air. And finally, you have Cam Newton in week 15, playoff week, where he put up 340 yards and five touchdowns. Oh, and he also added 100 yards on the ground. Oof. Oof. Those, are some, those are some big performances. A couple observations. One. Three of the five nominated performances were from week 15 when it kind of mattered. Yeah. But the people won championships because of those three guys. All right. Let's see who the let's, winner is. Let's open up the I envelope. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm, this is a drum roll. The winner was. And the winner and is, is. David Johnson. Excuse me? I'm sorry. The winner is. David Johnson. Yeah, week my, He was 15, running that category. 29 for 187. Oof. Three touchdowns. Second place was the Drew Brees seven touchdown game. And coming in third was Cam Newton's big week 15 performance. Do you guys agree with the the vote? Yeah, uh, I've got to uh, I got to agree with the voters on this one. David Johnson from the running back position to give you that performance in your semifinals. Uh, it, Clutch. Yeah, it, it doesn't get much better than that. One of the things about the Rawls performance, it was great. But not many people would have thought to play him that week. It was a very late call and a late choice there. So uh, David Johnson takes the very first one. Our first our first footy, footy of the year. goes to David Johnson. All right, guys, let's get I think to you numbers. Need, yeah, Andy has to run this yeah, one. Yeah, this, this one's all about you, Andy. All right, the nominees for the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year, <laughs> which... Uh, in case you wonder what that is, it's the play. Which player's painful injury hurt fantasy owners the most this season? The nominees are Arian Foster with an Achilles twice <laughs> and a groin. Yes, a- uh, Le'Veon Bell with a torn MCL. Jamal Charles with a torn ACL. Marshawn Lynch. I believe he had a sports hernia. Is that what happened? That to is him? correct. Okay. Andrew Luck, a lacerated kidney, <laughs> and overall sucking. Uh, and Des Bryant with a Jones fracture to his foot. And the winner of the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year was Le'Veon Bell. Oh, Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell takes it. He hurt fantasy owners in a big way. He missed the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, he had the two games. The two game suspension. This one was not very close. All right, um, Le'Veon Bell won by more than twice the margin, coming in very close. Actually, right now, 
They're about tied. Jamal Charles and Arian Foster are tied for second place. Yeah, the the reason Le'Veon Bell runs away with this isn't because of how devastating his injury was, but because of how good he was when he was not injured. The clear-cut best running back in the league. If you're in a PPR, get out of it. He was going to win a bunch of people a league, and then he left. But hopefully you had his handcuff. D'Angelo Williams has been very good in replacement. And so the next category for the 2015 footies, Garbage Man of the Year. I'm going to need the drop. Oh, the garbage man can. This award goes to the fantasy player who did the most damage when it mattered the least. <laughs> <laughs> and the nominees, Blake Bortles, Brandon Cooks, Philip Rivers, Danny Woodhead, and Jordan Matthews. The winner of the 2015 with 43% of the vote garbage man of the year. We all know it's Jordan Matthews, <laughs> the ultimate garbage man, the sanitation engineer himself. Uh, Jordan with, Matthews did work when it mattered. The, the game least. after the game, Jordan Matthews, although there was, it was a little bit close with Blake Bortles in second place. Oh, there was man. some recency bias. Jordan Matthews did a lot of garbage work at the end of the year. Blake Bortles did a consistent amount. Yeah, throughout the entire year, Blake Bortles was great at taking out that trash. But Danny man, Woodhead was third. Yes, but that, that was just from, I think, one amazing performance all in the fourth quarter especially. But Jordan Matthews, I think the reason he was such a good garbage time player was he helped get his team to garbage time. <laughs> when when the plays mattered, he couldn't catch the ball. But later in the game, when it's like, oh, the game's out of reach. It doesn't matter if I catch this ball. It was easier to catch for him. So, <laughs> so he not only removed the garbage, <laughs> yes. he was the creator. Yeah. He was. So he, he deserves this. The true garbage man. He deserves this footy. Now listen, Jordan Matthews, Danny Woodhead, Phillip Rivers, Brandon Cooks, Blake Bortles, what do they got in common? If you want to be considered for the Garbage Man of the Year, what do you need? You need a bad team. You need a bad team. You need to be on a losing team because all of those guys late in the game. Well, speaking of bad, Ooh. we might want to shift to our next Oof. stinky award. The next footy? It is the Poopiest Pants Award. <laughs> Despite high expectations, this player let fantasy... <laughs> Pooped in his big boy pants. These are the guys that let you down despite high expectations, and the nominees are Randall Cobb, Eddie Lacy, C.J. Anderson, DeMarco Murray, and Jeremy Hill. There's a lot of poop in those pants. A lot of poop in those pants, but one of those pants is larger than all the other pants. And it was able to fill up with so much poop that he oh. ran away with the award. Oh. It wasn't close. Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy. You oh. pooped in your big boy pants and you crapped all over fantasy teams for Eddie, everyone. Eddie over Lacy. 50% of the vote. Yeah, it was. It, I don't blame the voters on this one at all. Eddie Lacy, we all had the highest of hopes, a consensus top five pick he was number one uh num no number two he was number two on my big board and uh he definitely went number two <laughs> <laughs> give so me Le'Veon bell i would so much <laughs> rather have a guy I was just about that to ask gets you. injured and now i gotta replace him you did this over and over right arian foster goes down Deion Deion lewis, lewis goes thomas down. roll and so you you go, I've got to make a move. I've got to replace him. But Eddie Lacy did the worst thing he could, which is every now and then. He hope. tantalizes you yeah, with his he's past. Like, oh, hope. I had a great game on your bench. I Put was, me in. I was just about to ask you because Arian Foster was my number one on my big board before the year. Eddie Lacy was near the top of yours. Which situation would you rather have been in? If you were an owner that drafted Arian Foster, you finished better than if you drafted Eddie Lacy. Well, it had to be Eddie Lacy. If Foster, I mean, I, where I could, I drafted Foster in like the fifth or sixth round. I actually did not have any Eddie Lacy on my team. It seems because I didn't have a top five pick anywhere. Number two was Demarco Murray, which I completely understand. Yeah. I'm surprised it's not even closer because Demarco's expectations were H asinine, humongous. Yeah, and then third was C.J. Anderson, and he's actually a playoff challenge guy for me. 
because yeah, I think C.J. Anderson's starting to come into form. He has bounced back. It, it The more you watch of Anderson and the opportunity, the more it looks like it really was the ankle injury and the the offense with with uh, Manning. The, the way it was being run, it just it didn't fit with his run style. I, I might be looking into this too much, but it kind of seems like a lot of these guys are guys that are bigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. C- yeah well, C.J. Not Anderson. Randall Cobb. No, but I did make but, some comments yeah, about Cobb Randall earlier Cobb in the year. Randall Cobb looked bigger this year. C.J. Anderson came oh, into training camp overweight. Even Jeremy Eddie Hill's Lacey. a bigger back. Yeah. It's just interesting that they're all power guys. They're all power guys. When yep. you eat a diet heavy in fat, and you fiber. get the <laughs> you get, all, right. You- all right, the next footy <clears throat> is the Waiver Wire Wonder Award, which undrafted Waiver Wire stud was the best signing of the 2015 season. We had a number of nominees in this category. I'll go through them quickly. It's tough. Yeah, there's a lot. There are D'Angelo Williams, Thomas Rawls, Tim Hightower, Jordan Reed, David Johnson, Charkandrick West, Chris Johnson, and Blake Bortles. And so the votes are in. And the winner of the Waiver Wire Wonder footy is D'Angelo Williams. Congratulations, D'Angelo Williams. Any words from D'Angelo? He- was a monster, just a complete monster. It was, and uh, I dare say, a very large surprise, especially the first two weeks uh, when I don't think... He was the number one running back after the first two weeks. There was probably a few people out there who recommended, yeah, you know, grab D'Angelo Williams and play him, but it seemed like a a fool's errand if you were going to replace Le'Veon Bell, if you took him in the first. You know, I need a guy for the first couple weeks. There was no way I was playing D'Angelo Williams that first week and not even the second week, uh, but he was a monster. He fit right into the offense, and then when Bell went down, he he came in, 200 carries, 907 yards, 11 touchdowns, 40 catches, 40 catches for 367 yards. Monster year. He was the number four back on the entirety of the year. Monster. He had 38% of the vote. Coming in second with 22% was David Johnson. Third was Jordan Reed with 16% of the vote, and fourth was Blake Bortles with 10%. And that's such an important category. The waiver wire wonder that's is, how you win. is generally a guy that wins a lot of championships. Last year, last year it was Justin Forsett, that gold off the waiver wire. Every year we want to know who gets this award. So, D. Will, congratulations. Congratulations. And, I mean, Hightower really should have gotten a little bit more love, I think, just because of the clutchness. It, it's a... He didn't have a full body of work, which I completely understand. But I saw a uh, a nug- nugget, a factoid. Tim Hightower, the most common player among championship teams. Yes. Wow. Wow. And, and that, last year, that sense. was Odell Beckham Jr. Right. And so Tim Hightower this year, a guy who hadn't taken a carry since 2011, comes in and makes that kind of a fantasy impact. It, it made me uh, just laugh a little bit to look at the top running backs and see D'Angelo Williams and Tim Hightower <laughs> right. and these names of guys that you just never – you couldn't have in a million years. You could have thrown darts at a wall all day, and you never would have landed on those guys, especially nope. Tim Hightower. So so we're going to take the footies into the positional categories. Yes, we are. So we'll start with the fantasy wide receiver of the year, and we asked the voters factor in draft position, big game performances, and impact to your fantasy football team and the nominees for fantasy wide receiver of the year were Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham Jr., Doug Baldwin, Allen Robinson, DeAndre Hopkins, and rounding out the category, Brandon Marshall. And I'm going to have to take this over from you. Did we have a late? Because late vote has what? changed the outcome of this. What? We have. The, I, I'm this, looking at the live what, vote. This, and this is, is unprecedented. Wait, where's... <laughs> This is un- this is like it, wait is the winner Columbia this this is Steve Harvey <laughs> we are in Steve Harvey territory right here unfortunately I well, I'm looking at the actual uh, up to date live stats and then I I look back to our doc and it is a different name wow and so at I'm top? gonna need at, at number one oh my goodness and the winner of the footy I don't even know I'm excited wide receiver of the year with twenty six percent of the vote. We're very close. So Second place was 24% of the vote. <sighs> Antonio Brown. Oh. Antonio Brown. Oh. Antonio Brown came back late 
Number two, the very close second is Allen Robinson. I am, I am in complete Are you in and shock? utter shock right now. <laughs> Allen Robinson was running away with this in the beginning. I was I, the first five hundred votes that came in. It was like, okay, well, that one's clearly going to Allen. The Robinson. word Allen was right at the front of my mouth I before I got it. flagged down. I had to grab Incredible. it. Incredible. Well, he I will a, tell you this: a thirty vote lead, and he, he won. I Antonio can't. Brown deserves it, and he is. Uh, you know, look, he might not have been as value based a pick as Allen Robinson, but Antonio Brown has shown that he is the best wide receiver in the league. Maybe the best fantasy player in the league. Yeah, and, and we've talked about pro probably too early and too much about the fact that he would be a worthy never, number never one pick next year. But Antonio Brown, he is an absolute monster. Congratulations, and That's, Antonio. And I, uh, third place was Brandon Marshall with 16% of the vote, DeAndre Hopkins, and then Julio Jones. So, yes, big surprise there. <laughs> Apparently, the second best wide receiver year of all time in Julio Jones was only best. That's only <laughs> good enough fifth. for fifth. Maybe <laughs> because some people who owned him had a similar opinion as I did, that he which is the most you. ridiculous opinion of all. But he didn't help me. Well, he a didn't bunch. score enough <laughs> touchdowns. I mean, he he had the yards, was. but he didn't get the touchdowns. Look, Antonio Brown won oh. weeks, and he won them consistently. Julio Jones <laughs> from weeks four through the second to last week of the year, had like two touchdowns. So he came out and he gave you uh, 10 to 20 points, which you loved. It's fine. He didn't win your week. Antonio Brown came out and some of the performances oh goodness. that he put up. Against Denver? I mean, that was – we didn't speak yeah, on this, but the, the individual performance of the year, I actually voted for that Antonio Brown in week 15 against Denver. Look, against if Julio had won people more leagues, he would have won that category.